Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired with Pepe Minambo. Another evening of insightful engagement, thought-provoking conversations, and really in-depth reflection on matters, change and transformation. About two weeks ago, I started a series on championing organizational change and transformation. So basically driving change at organizational level. But then what, where does it start? If someone told me, an organization cannot be smarter than the people that run it, people that work in the organization, the organization can be smarter than them. So, meaning sustainable, substantial change starts at individual employees level. It's only at that point that the organization can go through change and transformation. But today I want to focus on one particular element that is so critical in driving organizational change and transformation. And this aspect is about change champions. Now, you see, a champion of change doesn't have to be working in an organization. You can champion change at a family level, at community level. You can champion change at, let's say, a social level. You can champion change at business level and even at organizational level. But who is a change champion? Let's look at people in history that brought about change. You know, either social change, it could be academic change, or it was economic change, or business change, or political change, any kind of change, even religious change. I would like us to look at such figures that we all admire and we wish to be like in our lives, in our homes, in our businesses and in our organization. So my conversation tonight, I want to focus on what does it take for one to be a change champion at whatever level, under whatever circumstances, what makes a change champion a change champion? Welcome to the show. We are here courtesy of Aquafina. Only what's essential. And this show is brought to you also by Centenary Bank, our bank. So it's a great honor, great pleasure to have these two great brands ushering the show to your homes tonight. Now, as I said earlier, tonight it's about championing change. It could be at health level. I know some of us, we know our bodies are asking for something different, but we don't have that gut, that courage to stop the clock and introduce change of lifestyle, maybe change of diet, or just change of routines at a personal level, health-wise. Some of us in our parenting, in our homes, in our marriages, in our relationships, we know it is time for change. If someone told me, if they ask you what time, say it's change o'clock. It's time for change at a personal level, health-wise, at a personal level, parenting-wise, at a personal level, family-wise, at a personal level, financial-wise. But then we do not have the guts to stop the clock and start talking about change. Now, the first thing that makes a change champion a change champion is what I call guts, boldness, audacity. In fact, a book by uh, Barack Obama titled The Audacity of Hope. I would like to challenge anyone listening to me tonight to go and search for that book, The Audacity of Hope. It takes audacity to talk change. It takes audacity to think change. And let me tell you, change, the need for it, it's all over as you are driving there is need for change. As you come to the office, there is need for change. At home, there is need for change. If you go to a church, there is need for change. Everywhere, everybody is subconsciously or consciously screaming change, change, change. But let me tell you, it takes guts, it takes courage, 
It takes boldness. It takes audacity to disrupt the status quo, to challenge the convention, to defy the odds and demand for change or introduce change. And if the little change that you should be introducing health-wise, the little change that you should be introducing social-wise, if the little change you should be introducing cost management or finance management-wise, if the little change you should be introducing lifestyle-wise, you can't forget about big change at work. Forget about big change in society. I say the first quality of every change champion in the history of humanity, before Christ or after Christ, in the recent history or in the current modern time, I've read biographies and autobiographies. I've listened to people. I've done studies. The first thing that makes someone a great change champion under whatever circumstances is boldness. You know, the courage to say no. And the courage to just desire some better treatment. The courage to to stand for something that you believe you should be standing for. You know, change starts by identifying what you stand for in life. Change starts by defining what we call the non-negotiable. What are the non-negotiables health-wise? What are the non-negotiable when it comes to your financial life? And what are non-negotiable when it comes to your parenting or marriage? What are non-negotiable when it comes to your Career, professions, future, and investment. What are the non-negotiable? But you can't define the non-negotiable until you are bold, until you are courageous, until you stand and say, up to here I will go, from here to there, I will not cross these boundaries, and I will not allow anyone to cross these boundaries. I say, real, sustainable, societal, organizational change starts at individual level. In fact, someone say, everybody's thinking of changing the world. But no one is thinking of changing themselves. How will you change the world if you can't change yourself? You know that the food you are eating is not good for your heart, not good for your health, and you can't change that diet. How will you change the world? You know that you must save, you must invest, you must do one, two, three things, and you can't do that. But then how will you change the world? The little things that were changed begins. In fact, I remember... Uh, uh, a, a lady, a great lady who said, he said she said, it's the little things that people do that makes a difference in the world. And then she said, my little thing is planting trees to conserve the environment and to give future to our children. It is the little things that citizens do that make a difference. It is the little things that members of an organization do that makes a difference. It's the little things that members of a community do that makes a difference. It's the little things that members of a family do that makes a difference. It's the little change that they do that makes all the difference. Then the lady say, my little thing is planting trees. And that's the late Wangare Madai, the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. The first African woman to win that prestigious prize. She say, my little thing is planting trees. Now I want to ask you the first question tonight. What's your little thing? At health level, what's your little thing? At financial level, what's your little thing? At social level, what's your little thing? At relation thing level, what's your little thing? Then let's come at business level, what's your little thing? At career level, what's your little thing? At organizational level, what's your little thing? What is that little thing, little change that you need to start with before the big changes come? So the first thing that defines a change champion is the family community at work in the marketplace, his boldness, his audacity, the courage to stand for something. As it is said, if you can't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So my question to you tonight is, what kind of change are you advocating at work? What kind of change would you like to advocate at work? But then I beg the question, what do you stand for? What are your non-negotiables? But then what is that little thing that you would like to see change for it to usher in the bigger change in your life, in the community, in your family, and even at the organization? The little thing could be that little whisper, that little voice that will highlight an issue that needs to be addressed, that needs to be changed. But then it takes courage to speak. It takes courage to express yourself. 
So the first quality of anyone that I know brought about change either in their personal financial life, either health-wise or marriage or uh, children or career or business or organization was boldness. Unfortunately, a lot of people are so risk-averse, are so conservative, are so cowards. Like someone say, a coward dies so many times before his death. So ladies and gentlemen, personal change, financial change, physical change, health change, organizational change, business change, they all start with the courage to stand for something. What do you stand for? If you can't stand for something, you'll fail for anything. It is the little things that people do that makes the whole difference. And my little thing is planting trees. Wangari Madai, what is your little thing? Little thing, but big courage. What do you stand for? As we return after the break, we'll talk about the seven aspects that influence change in society. What makes some people so influential and they are able to influence change while others will not even move an inch? Do you feel some fire in your belly burning need for change at whatever level? under whatever circumstances, so keep it here. Courtesy of Aquafina and Centenary Bank, our bank, we will be right back. <laughs>